as it goes, stretch it, 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 st
don't drop your head. Because again, letting the ball drop over your head, you can't see it. But dropping your head, if any problem now, it'll go beyond you. Always, always, always catch that ball and have them eyes firmly fixed on it. If anyone comes and clatters you, we're a protected species. We're a little bit like alligators. Yeah? No one likes us. They're always moaning about us. Yeah? But they can't do without us. I'm not saying you can't do without alligators, but I don't think you can. <laughs> but they can't do without us. Okay? If you go near a goalie these days, nine times out of ten, we'll get a free kick. Go! And away you go. Super big man. Lovely feet. And what we're dealing with here is the footwork movement. Now remember we spoke in the little areas there about turning and crossing and getting caught cross-footed. What I'm advocating to the players now is not, is not a cross, it's just more of a step. So as that ball gets played big, it's a big step rather than a crossover movement. Or he uses his outside leg to take the step and keep his body shape open. But what it does, it gives him the opportunity <coughs> to go and make ground up. Okay? So work on the footwork as well. You'll never get there. When I say go, just start in front of it. Just get round it nice and quickly. Work your feet. Up and catch. Yep. Good lad. So again, giving them all the technical detail. Giving them the opportunity to take crosses. But most importantly for me is unopposed work and it breeds confidence. Your outfield players will always, you'll always want them to practice their passing skills. Let the goalkeeper practice the skills that he needs to participate in your team. Go! And away. Good take, son. Well done. Love it. Yep. Over you go. Work off that back foot. Brilliant. Step into the other goal. Over you go. Good lad, don't drop that head. I know that air's heavy. You've got a lot of gel in there this morning, haven't you? You've got the girlfriend to meet this afternoon. Go! Around the cone and catching away. Keep that body open. Opposite side, work off the other leg. Go! And away. So again, like we spoke about, working both sides. Yep. Good. Take off the inside leg, not the outside. I'll speak about it in a minute. Go! And away. Good. Yep. Good. Jump then. Now this time, there's your goal. Take up a nice centralised starting position in relation to the ball. Yep. Open your body up so you can see Nice and positive, nice and big, I can see the picture. When I serve the ball, it's a lateral movement to take the cross, okay? Go to the back of the queue. As soon as I serve that ball, I want you from here to be a striker, passive. So now I'm gonna introduce a body, hopefully to not smash him, but just to give some sort of passive resistance to the practice. And your job, as I serve that ball, is just to run, and jump. You'll land about here, you'll give me the ball back, you'll come into the goal, you'll set, you'll be the striker, you'll be on the back of the kick. Alright chaps? So now we're working forwards, we've worked backwards, now we're going to work laterally across him. Okay, just if the other two just step out so he doesn't nass it. And go! Good lad, well done. So we'll let him go for a few. Yep. Good. Terrific. Go. So it's all I'm starting to do now is put a movement in front of the goalie. And what I'm trying to do is say to the goalie, the one thing that's critical for you is to keep your eye on the ball. Don't worry about his movement. Worry about the flight of the ball, your angle and speed of approach, the timing of your takeoff, and the technique of your catch or your punch, depending on your decision. Okay? And plate. Super. Hold it there. Don't move. That was brilliant. What he's done is he's taken off of his inside leg. What that does for him, if he brings his outside knee up and his 
you've got a good flexed elbow position, it presents a far heftier barrier to jump into. Yeah, go up again, put that one down, put that one up for me. That position there, taking off of the outside leg, always gives the encouragement, and if I jump into it now, I might be able to, one, spin his body shape to face his own goal and make a mistake, but most importantly, he leaves himself very, very vulnerable to groin injury. So if I ripped him round quick enough, I could tear a groin muscle. Yeah, I'm not saying that he still won't get clattered, but centre forward will look at that and it will be a much more daunting barrier to go into and have to, have to deal with. Okay, as soon as you give anyone the opportunity in, the, in goal to do you, invariably they'll try. So give yourself the best possible opportunity. Because people always say to me, yeah, goalies get their knee up to protect themselves. The one thing that the goalie has to do in that situation is keep his eye on the ball. The one thing the centre forward has to do in that situation is either, and a lot of the time, is what they want to do is put the frighteners on the goalie and smash him. He has to deal with the ball. So you have to have a coping mechanism of that shape to be able to do that. Inside leg, so if it's coming in from my right hand side, I'm taking off inside leg. If it's coming in from the opposite side, I'll take off inside leg. Yeah? And again, it's about teaching the tots how to spring off of both legs from both sides so they become comfortable in that area. Okay? Keep that going, chaps. There you go, wee man. Now then, is that a good starting position? Not really, because you're behind the line, you're very square to the ball, and what that might tell me is you're not very confident about dealing with crosses. Okay, what I want you to do is come in front of the line, open your shoulders up, be nice and positive and nice and bold. Prepare your hands nice and early, don't leave them too low, because if you leave them too low, the ball comes in now and I'll go to jump with you. Jump and catch the ball, and I'll just put my arm across you, I'll get a block on you. So prepare your arms nice and early. You might even start putting them on your above your head. A couple of little tricks of the trade for you. The centre forward starts coming in and giving it all that. You might just step on his toe. <laughs> Do it. Or even better, Neville Southall. I don't know if you remember Neville Southall. Played for Everton. He was one of the best goalies in the world, if not the best, for a few years. Every time a centre forward went near him just used to shout as loudly as he could in his ear to his defenders to get up. So he'd shout, get up! <laughs> and the centre forward would be, what the fuck, what are you doing? But didn't like going back near Neville Southall. So he created some space for himself. There's nothing anyone can do, it's not foul play. It's just creating yourself a little bit of space. There you go. Thank you, Pat! Much better, my son. Well done, good. Now, what's the one thing that he added to that that we haven't had in this session so far? Communication. Terrific. Goalkeeper's communication needs to be a couple of things. What would they be? Loud. Loud. Clear. Clear. Positive. Positive. So, there's one thing it needs to be early. Because it can be loud, it can be clear, it can be concise. If it's late, it's a problem. Early, loud, clear, concise. Can't give loads of information. Keep us! <coughs> Away! That's all it needs. Okay, so let me hear you. Keep us! Good lad, well done, good. Come on to the blue cone. Yep! Keep us! Good take. Now you're looking like goalies. Terrific. Go! Keep us! You've got the voice! You're the man! Good lad. Yep. Keep us! Brilliant. One more time through. You're really cooking now, fellas. Onto the blue cone. Go. Keep us! Good lad. Well done. Stay on the blue cone, somebody. Yep. Keep us! Good take. Nice height. Super stuff. Yep. Keep us! Yeah, I like that. Really aggressive. Yep. Keep us! Beautiful. And relax. All right, chaps. No problem. 